okay, I'm here with someone that, uh, like me, understands a little bit how it is to live in the shadows of a, of a big-time father, mm -hmm. right? Austin Age, Director of Player Personal for Boston Celtics. Thank you so much for hosting us. Oh, this is great. This place is beautiful, man. This is awesome. A lot of years in the making, and uh, it, it's big for us. Our players love it. We all love it. It's, it's, been, it's been great to be here. I'm really emotional because I've been following the Celtics since I was a kid, since the late 80s. So to be here in this environment is just, it's, in, it's incredible. Um, tell me a little bit, because I, you know, I saw my father playing, and he was a superstar worldwide. You know, I, I had the pleasure to actually play with him after he retired. You know, playing soccer together, pick up games, but I never, I was never able to work with him exactly, like doing what he does. Sure. And and to see you working with your father, and being in the same, sometimes the same capacity and doing the same things, how was it for you, like growing up? Working with him right now is great. It's yeah. it's a lot of fun. Um, he makes it easy. He's very laid back. You know, he's very different as a player. He was very intense yeah. and lots of fights and stuff. You know, <laughs> through as, chairs at people. Exactly. <laughs> as a as a boss, he's very laid back. Uh -huh. uh, lets us have a lot of freedom, a lot of input. Uh -huh. um, you know, I, I usually explain my job that I fly around and watch a lot of basketball games, and then I argue with my father. Right. Know, so that's <laughs> that's uh, that's the job, but it's fun. That's funny because uh, my father was a pain in the ass because <laughs> you know it's sometimes for some people it's hard to differentiate like job with with father and son yeah yeah so i would assume sometimes you would you know get your way all of a sudden you know, you're my son yeah some of that you know it it, it feels like natural because uh, -huh. uh we've been arguing about basketball players my whole life so it yeah. just feels like the dinner table yeah but here in this Facility. And you kind of did the same, like the same path, right? Yeah, you you played in college in the same university that yep. you played, Brighton. BYU. Yep. Yeah, and then um, at becoming an executive and doing like yeah. the same thing. You know, I tried. He was just a lot better at it. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to ask yeah. you this. I was going to ask you this because you were at one point you were a really great player. You were you were one of the top three point shooters in the country, right? And you won. Uh, correct me if I'm mistaken. A three, two Mountain uh, yeah. Western Championship. You went to three uh, NCAA uh, yeah. uh, tournaments, one national invitation tournament. Um, what happened with you? Not why not the NBA? I, I wasn't good enough. Oh, I, really? Too too slow to be honest. Really? Yeah, I, I was a skilled player, mm -hmm. good passer, good shooter, mm -hmm. um, but uh, just I wasn't fast enough. And uh, wow. that it's, a, it's a, you know it's it's really hard to make the NBA. It's yeah. very very hard. I and know. and uh, I you know, in this job, evaluating all the players, I mean, you, you have to be so good. Yeah. And I wasn't quite good enough, but it, I, I loved playing. It was a lot of fun, uh -huh. and uh, I enjoy being part of the game still. Did you get a little, like, frustrated about, about that, or just, you know? No, like, not really. I mean, I, I grew up around NBA players my whole life, yeah. obviously, and, yeah. and so I knew how good they were. Uh -huh. And uh, I was not a, a super highly rated high school player, so I mm -hmm. never had the expectation that I'm going to make the NBA. I always tried, right. you know, to get better, but I never thought this is for sure I'm going to make it. You went to right. another university after Brighton, right? You played in another college? Uh, no, I coached at a oh, college yeah. uh, called Southern Utah, and uh -huh. then I coached in the G League right. uh, for in the main Red Claws. Right. Yep. And then I've been uh, working here. That was right after you were undrafted, right? Yeah. Yeah. And and how did you like was that something you already had the vision of it or was it was it something that you developed, you know, the eye to, you know. Yeah, I mean, I, at first in college I thought uh, I was going to go to law school and be a lawyer really? uh and then as as my playing career went along, I just I realized I wanted to be part of the game still. I uh -huh. still wanted to work in basketball, so I decided to look at coaching opportunities because you were responsible for i don't know if it was only on state university right utah state. southern utah southern utah state yeah and then on maine uh you were responsible for recruiting players for a video uh, breakdown and yeah you, everything. you really at, at, at lower college levels and in the g league mm -hmm. you don't have big staffs like we have in the nba i had to do everything i can see <laughs> you here doing everything You're getting the chairs <laughs> and uh, working and yeah that. so no it, it's uh it's not something you know when you start off at any profession you have mm -hmm. to be humble and do be willing to do all the work video 
working players out in the morning and the night and, and just doing everything. So that, that was my job. And it wasn't something that you studied like for more like you just had the uh, obviously being around, you know, the experience yeah. and, and the knowledge of the game, yeah. right? I mean, my, my whole life, I was a ball boy when yeah. my father was a player and a coach. Yeah, it was just like and me. <laughs> been, <laughs> yeah, been in everything and, and, and uh, doing all the top camps nice. in the summer, being around lots of great coaches. So I had an opportunity to learn a lot you know, growing up and playing and, and, uh, and, but obviously as a young coach, I still had a lot to learn and, and yeah. that's what those opportunities gave me. Lots of chances to, to Were learn. you in those trips when, when your father was a coach, you know, I, some of those, I did some, you uh, know, but of course I was at school and my own games and right. things, but yeah, I went on some. You've been here for what, if you count since you started as a scout, then you left, it's been 10 years with the 10 Celtics, years. Yeah. Right? What, what is your main um, responsibility, the key responsibility? So know, I it? oversee the scouting staff, mm -hmm. make sure we're seeing everybody we need to, right, uh, all over the world. Mm -hmm. And then um, I help assemble the team. So trades, free agents, draft, um, all, all of that is the main job. I mean, get the best players for Coach Stevens. That's and you're, you're always part of the trade discussions also, of free agent negotiations, yeah. everything, right? All of I mean, that. We actually connected through... Uh, Louise, who was a scout yeah. for the Celtics in, uh, was it Latin America? Yeah, he, he'd go to all of Brazil, Argentina mostly, you right. know, and, and scout for us. He was a teammate of mine at BYU <laughs> and, a, and a great friend. So Really? Uh, and, and, a, and a good basketball mind. So we had him scouting for us. You had all there. Brazilian friends, him, Walter, who else was uh, yeah. that you know? Baby Araujo. Baby Araujo. Uh, Jonathan Tavernari. Yeah. We had another player whose name was Fernando Malaman. This was back in, 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 in... All at BYU. Oh, BYU. Va okay. Walter recruited all of them to come. <laughs> okay. You know, he used his Brazilian connections. Uh -huh. and, and so I had the opportunity to play with uh, lots of Brazilian players. Did he help also to bring those Brazilians to the Celtics too? or Because we had some, some players here. No, right? not yeah. as much, not as much. No. But, um, but I certainly would call and ask his opinion. He's the guy to call, right? But it's a different culture. Brazilians yeah. got to... Yeah. <laughs> you know, a lot of people have the curiosity, especially in Bra not only in Brazil. Brazil, we are, we are used to you know, presidents and directors of soccer. It's mainly mm -hmm. soccer, soccer, soccer. Most, of the part of the, most parts yeah. of the world. Here you have a tough competition with NFL mm -hmm. and Major League Baseball. Tell us a little bit how, how hard it is to be an executive, if it's hard, if at all it's hard, to be like an executive and run operations and travel, like the, the, the crazy life of being an executive. Yeah, I mean, it, it's the travel. It's the time being away from your family. Yeah. That's right. the hardest part, right? And, mm -hmm. and then I would say you, you couple that with the fact that all of your mistakes are in the public. Yeah, right. <laughs> and we Tell feel we it. feel that pressure. We we have great fans here in Boston, and we have amazing uh, history. Yes. And we have great organizations in the Red Sox and the Patriots yes. and the Bruins, and and so we feel that pressure to maintain that standard, and uh, and it motivates you and, and uh, pushes you to work really hard. It's the biggest sports town yeah. in the states, it's arguably. Had, right. Had a really good uh, last fifteen years. It's been great. Yeah. And. Uh, but but you know it, it it's fun it's it's if I could do it for free I'd do it for free it, it's it's just yeah. it's a passion. You started you started as executive many years ago, but now mm -hmm. with it with the technology with um, social media everything kind of changed, yeah. and I can see you know it it, it I think it affects um, you know the day to day because all those insiders and all those rumors and everything. I mean I assume it's kind of crazy for you guys. Yeah, I mean. Y we get a lot of benefit from media coverage, right? right, um, right. And, and the popularity of our sport grows with social media. Mm -hmm. well, NBA is huge on Twitter and yes. Instagram. I mean, it's big. And that's one reason why the NBA is doing so well, because mm -hmm. of the young people love it. You know, some of the other fan bases in other sports, they're mm -hmm. getting older. The young kids don't like it as much. Yeah. And, and the NBA is different. Uh, oh. The young kids love the NBA. So there are some negatives it's with it. It's the biggest league on Twitter. Yeah, yeah by for far, sure. By for far. sure. And, yeah. and so all the highlights, you know, it's, it's yeah. big. And so we, we, there are some negatives with mm -hmm. all the rumors and stuff, but yeah. there's so many positives. We, we try to embrace it. Is that a problem when you're trying to negotiate with a, with a free agent and then all of a sudden comes, you know, yeah. Waj and Sham and all those guys yeah, that are the insiders yeah. and they come with those yeah, crazy rumors? Yeah, but that, you know, that's part of it and that, that drives interest. Right, right. Fans love it. It makes it fun to follow, and and uh, it, interest and intrigue. Um, but you know, th yeah. Sometimes we have to have discussions with players. Yeah. You know, sometimes they'll come to us. Hey, am I getting traded? Not, and you just you just have to be honest. Are agents a, a, a 
I mean, there it could be a positive and a negative, obviously, yeah. but yeah. you have to deal with them, you know. To, yeah, agents yeah, all, all the time. time. All, all the time. time. I talk to agents every day. Um, mm -hmm. Most of them, most of the time, are great to work with, right? Every now and again, there's a negotiation that gets tough, right. um, and they're fighting for their players, and we understand it. It's business. This basketball community, it's a small world. Yeah. It, all the scouts, all the agents, I... I travel the whole world, all uh -huh. these countries, and I feel like I see the same 50 guys, yeah. you know, everywhere. So. It's funny how uh, in the United States, it might be considered the third sport. I don't know, might be, but worldwide, you cannot compare the, like the, the impact of basketball and the NBA. Yeah, we've had a lot of success opinion, internationally. Least, yeah, yeah, had a lot of success internationally in a lot of countries and it, uh, it really makes it fun. I, I, like I said, I go all over the world and people see my Celtics sweatshirts or backpack yeah. and they all want to talk about the NBA. It's great. I'm just saying, because you said it's a community, but it's funny how f for you here is a community, but like the, the perception worldwide is that this is like, you know, it's like the, 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 the European soccer, you know, the way it yeah, is worldwide, yeah, but yeah. the NBA is huge. I mean, in Brazil, it's No, huge. it's, I mean, the fan base is huge. I was talking more about the executives, right? We're yeah, all, yeah. we're all kind of friends. Right, There's only right. 30 teams, right? So, you know, everybody yeah. that works for the other teams. Yeah, people get surprised because I say, hey, um, only in Rio we have 100 professional soccer teams. <laughs> only in one state. Wow, that's amazing. So, yeah, but but actually, you know, this is, I like it more because it's at least, it, you have one town, the whole town, you know, cheering yeah, for yeah, that yeah. team, for yeah. the only team. Yeah. And you can have like 10 teams in the same, uh, in the same city. Um, speaking about the Celtics, I was, in 2008, I was here to uh, watch that, uh, that finals, mm -hmm. uh, those finals against the Lakers. And a couple of years later, your father, I don't, were, were you uh, I was doing that trade team. Against, with Brooklyn Nets? Yeah. Yep. So that trade, I still remember that press conference with uh, Humphreys, Jared Wallace, and, yeah. and a lot of people were That depressed. was an awkward press conference. Yeah, that was really <laughs> awkward. And a lot of people were depressed, like, oh my God. Even though most of us, like fans, and I consider myself a big fan, we understood what what that was, yeah, what was yeah, happening, yeah. right? Trade for the future. Yes, exactly. But that was, um, that took courage to get a college coach again, because we had Rick Pitino before and it didn't go too well. So to bring a guy like that, you know, removed after Doc Rivers left. Yeah, yeah. It was a great coach and he was a champion here. It was a risk. It was a rookie was a coach risk. from college, right? Yeah. It was a risk, but... Um, it, it didn't feel like a risk once we got to know Brad. Oh. I mean, he's, he's a special person and he's a great leader and communicator. And um, we also knew that we did not have the team ready to win. Right. So Brad could grow with mm -hmm. the team and it, it's worked out better than we could have even hoped. And, and we're really excited about yeah. our team this year. I think we, we could see he was kind of a genius right in the first few games. I remember that game against... It was a trip in Florida, Orlando, Miami, mm -hmm. and we won that game with Jeff Green at the buzzer. Yeah, that that we see that team beating, you know, LeBron, Dwayne Wade, and Chris Bosh. We're like, wow, this coach is. He, he's he's done a great job. I mean, re really, he's gotten so much out of the talent that he's had. Yeah. Almost, I mean, think of how many players we've had have career. Jordan years. Crawford was it, was bringing. Yeah. yeah, and then you bring in one year. I think it was one year and a half, maybe. You brought Isaiah, mm -hmm. and you brought uh, Evan Turner. And all of a sudden, that team is in the playoffs. And what? then Al Horford signed. Al Horford and it just signed. went. Was that, was that the fourth year of Brad Seal? So we, I don't remember exactly, but, you know, we, so we traded for Isaiah halfway through, and then we signed Al the next summer. And, yeah. And those two together. How crazy is that turnaround in about four or five years? That doesn't happen very often. I mean, you see the Lakers right now, the Knicks, all the teams that are doing rebuild. Rebuilding is hard. And man. it's hard. We, we, had, uh, we had a lot of luck, to be honest. You know, right. we work really hard. We try to do the best we can. <laughs> but sometimes things have to fall. And we had a few trades uh, go our way. Uh -huh. And uh, it's, it's, it's been great. It's been a lot faster rebuild than we thought. But uh, we're, we're very grateful. Yeah. I want to go through some of those, uh, those moves because yeah. I can imagine how hard it was to... Uh, to trade Isaiah at that time. I yeah. mean, this was like, I, I can imagine. One of my favorite players ever, ever. that we've had uh, just a, as a person mm -hmm. and as a player, uh, when his sister passed away yeah. and he goes, how many, what was it? 52 50, points 52 against the Wizards. on her birthday. Yes. I, I was crying. Yeah. I was crying. I mean, it, 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 there's just, 
there's just nothing like that. I mean, that could be a movie, right? Yeah. I mean, it just, it's just yeah. amazing. His courage, his heart, yeah. his, his, his talent, he, he was amazing for us. And it was really hard. It was really hard. And that's, that's one of the hard parts of being an executive. Yeah. I mean, I, I get to know these guys and you get attached. You become friends. Yeah, you don't want to trade them, you know, but, yeah. but you, you, you know, as an executive, you have to go, okay, these are my emotions mm -hmm. and these are, this is what's best for the team. Right. And we represent the city of Boston, all these right. fans. We have to take our personal feelings aside and make, make the best trade for the team. And, and yeah. that's what we felt we had to do. I think a lot of people, you know, got mad in the beginning, emotional because of that. But yeah. people, so I, I remember when you used to play the Cavs, right? Celtics Cavs all the time. I said, obviously they have LeBron. But in my opinion, every time I, I said, we lose because of this guy called Kari Irving. This guy's, yeah. my goodness, sometimes he goes on a, you know, sequence that he cannot miss. He's a special, special player. He's a player. very special player. I yeah. mean, are you, uh, do you believe he's going to be here for a while? Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, we, we, you know, it's obviously up to him, but, um, but we're playing well. Our team's good. Kyrie's doing great. His leadership this year has been, I, I don't think, talked about enough. He, you know, we've had our ups and downs here at the start of the season, and Kyrie has just been positive. He's taken responsibility. He, he's been just an unbelievable leader and uh you know his play has always been great and he's just really growing into one of the great leaders also in the nba and it, it's it's really exciting Kyrie is amazing and one of the uh speaking of amazing players one of my favorite players while he was playing in the jazz was gordon hayward yeah and that was brutal when when you know when we just celtics brought him to boston and then first game of the season that that injury that was uh, it was it, something it yeah. felt like a funeral oh, for a couple of days. Obviously, it's just an injury, but oh. it felt it, it, it was like a punch. You know, we, yeah. we all felt it and uh, uh, felt so bad for Gordon and and for ourselves. Right. The team's hopes were, yeah. were obviously down and it, it was amazing how quick our guys bounced back. And then we go on the big winning streak. Yeah. 16, 16. What were we having like meetings about this, about what what's the. What's the future now without Gordon here in this season? And what were you? Like? Brad, from the very beginning, said, hey, no excuses. We, we have enough talent here. Let's go. And our guys are so confident and tough. You know, these guys, they, they really believe in themselves. And even though they're young, they, they knew that they could play and, and uh, just stepped right up. And by the way, Hayward, was it your brother that was doing... Uh, he was running for yeah. the for the Congress in Utah, and yeah. he was he was tweeting and saying, "No, oh, let's bring Hayward back to Utah." I was like, "What? What's going you, you on?" You can imagine uh, <laughs> trying to run an election in Utah when Gordon Hayward's deciding between yeah. Boston and Utah. So he was stuck in a very tough spot. And oh my uh, God. Uh, we, I would text him all the time. You know, hey, say whatever you want, get publicity from it, right? Just. Have fun with it. It, it. it was it was a fun. How time. was that day when he dis, when he finally decided? Because I remember, they you know, the one one journalist said you know Gordon Hayward decided to sign with the Boston Celtics, and then the other one comes and say no, and yeah. then a couple hours later we are all you know waiting for it. How how crazy was that? It was crazy because at that time, Gordon wasn't responding, and he didn't know about anything. We didn't know. We didn't know. We did, you know we we figured. It can't be true because if it was true, Gordon would tell us, right? But we, but he wasn't responding. The agent was saying, "No, he hasn't decided yet," oh. and so we were stuck. Media is going crazy. Every person in the world's calling us, and we we really didn't know. So it was it was crazy. Just imagine if he hasn't hadn't chosen uh, Boston. <laughs> My goodness, it would be. <laughs> yeah, it, it was it was a stressful uh, yeah. couple. Or I can't even remember how long it was, day or two, but it was stressful. That trade for uh, Jason Tatum. Tell me about this, because this at the time when people said they, we're going to trade the number one pick, you're like, what are you doing? Yeah. Nobody Im could imagine how how good was Jason Tatum, and that the Celtics really, you know, would prefer to pick Jason Tatum out of Markel Fultz. Yeah, and we can see now, you know, why. Obviously, I mean, it was it, you know we we were big fans of Jason. Uh -huh. We really liked Jason as a player, and um, you know, also at the time we had Isaiah Thomas. Right. Uh, you know, who had an MVP discussion, you know, whatever. He had an all-star year. And, uh, and you know, so Jason fit a little better. Mm -hmm. And we realized we were able to get a pick on top of yeah. uh, Jason. So everything just kind of worked out well. It, it uh, you know, and so, we, I mean, man, we were really yeah. excited about that trade and, and the way it's worked out so far. But, um, 
you know, a lot of years to go. Not a lot of players you see in the first year and you go like, because I remember the first year of Paul Pierce. I, st I still remember. Mm -hmm. And I would see, I watched some games and I go like, this guy, man, this guy is special. He was hitting shots from everywhere. And Jason is like, he's, he's cold blooded in the playoffs, you know, like scoring. He's got a good way yeah. about him. He's confident and he plays at a good pace. Um, and the best thing about it, he's a great guy too. Right. Jason, he works hard. He's a good person, and and those are huge. It's hard to. It's so much easier to build a team around a guy who yeah. who's willing to to play within the team system. His demeanor, and, right? It looks like he's uh, older. Yeah, he than, does. He plays. He, he acts and plays older than he is. I mean, obviously, you have three superstars plus Jason Tatum, which I think is a star. Jalen Brown, uh, so many good. Marcus Morris, oh my God, he, he's he's a great great shooter. Um, do you when when you when you were building this team, were you thinking of the Golden State Warriors like all the time? Like were you, it's like a chase, you know, to get the Warriors because you know the way they're built. I watched Clay Thompson score 52 points the other day, and he's like the third, considered the third best player if you think about it. Yeah, I mean yeah. they're they're obviously the best team, and we're all chasing them. Yeah. And you you think about them some, but I mean I think you think more about league wide trends, modern NBA. And we, we like to think about, you, you have to be able to play both ways. You have to be able to play small and fast. You have to play, be able to play bigger, right? We can go, we can play Al Horford at the four with Aaron Baines yeah. and, and be big against bigger teams. We can play Al Horford with lots of wings and guards if, if we want to play smaller and faster. We can, we can play both ways. So that's really what we're thinking about when constructing a team. You know, a lot of people always talk about Anthony Davis and talk about superstars. When you look at this team, you see like I we want to get we want to have this team for the future, mm -hmm. all the like or you ever think about adding another superstar or something? Like that. I know this question comes up a yeah, lot, but look, yeah. you you always think of, about um, how to make your team better, no matter how good you are, right? You always yeah. be thinking about the future, and contracts are always coming up, and you're always having more draft picks, right? So mm -hmm. you you can make plans for the future, but really. Things change so fast, yeah. so often. You just have to react in the moment. Yeah. Um, but we really like our team. We like our guys. We like our depth. We understand we're not going to be able to keep all of them in the future. Right. You yeah. can't afford it. You know, yeah, so you have a salary cap. And yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and so we're we're just really focused on this year and this team and getting the most out of them that we can. We're filming this um, one day after that game against the Bucks. Yeah. Where we had the franchise record of uh, 24 three pointers. Yeah. That was that was insane, and this shows me like how basketball it is right now. In terms of you know, it seems like every time I see a guard, he goes into the lane. He always kicking. He's always looking to kick the ball to the three point uh, shooter. Yeah. And you you remember when you were playing in college how it was compared to now? Is this like <laughs> craziness like the, with the three point shot? I'm like, I mean, it, it's it's been a slow but steady progression right it's just gotten more and more and more and more and i mean w what you think about is is just we want the we want that lane open we're still trying to get layups right we're still trying to get the ball inside uh -huh. but when they help mm. pass to the three point line and an open three point shot centers is are, just are, are, yeah jesus it, it just please. makes that defense it, it's really hard to rotate and help on defense when the floor is that spread uh -huh. when everybody can shoot it's hard to help and yeah. so that opens the lane for Kyrie Irving and Jalen Brown and, you know, all of our other players to get in the paint. And, and so that's, that's, it's a basic strategy, but it works. I think Steph Curry kind of changed. I mean, you know, when, when that cliche sentence, people say, oh, he changed the game, he changed the game. But when you get a guy who cro passes half court and he, you already have to guard him because he's going to shoot from anywhere, that changes, I, you know, I think changes the whole scheme, right? The whole system. I mean, he, he's an amazing talent, and uh, I'm not sure any changes in the game or evolution is going to be able to duplicate what, what he does. You know, he's, yes. he's very special. Um, but it, it, is, it is amazing how many guards we have now that yeah. can make really tough shots from very deep. I mean, Kyrie makes some crazy ones and, and uh, at a very high level. So it, it's it's fun. It's fun to watch. Do so you see when you're recruiting, like recruiting players, how they practice nowadays and they want to, you know, always do the three point shot because, like, you know, Horford right now is uh, is he's amazing in three point shooters. But the kids right now, they're yeah. I mean, it's 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 usually it's 
in the NBA, it, whatever style the NBA is doing, it, it, it's copied all the way down, right, to all the little right. kids. They, they all want to be like their favorite stars. So, um, I mean, evaluating a guy's shooting is a, is a huge part of yes. my job, but it's hard to predict at 18 years old how good of a shooter is he going to be when he's 25, right? That, that can be right, hard. Right. Austin, thank you so much. This, this facility is unbelievable. I'm, I'm really impressed. Um, I hope this team really gets us a banner gets us uh, another championship, maybe multiple championships, <laughs> right? And I was here in 2008 in the parade too, and I hope you know, we can have another parade here and I can come back. I'll take a parade, that would be great. No, we're, we're working hard, hope it I'll happens. I'll call you, you're gonna put me in that, in that car over <laughs> in there. In the duck right? boat, okay. yeah, to all right. the trophy, please. <laughs> Thank you so much, man, appreciate it. Was it was fun. Thank you, yeah. yeah. Well, since you've come such a long way and you're a big fan, you wanna see a tour? Of course, I all love right. it. Show right. the locker room. Let's go. We go see the video room. Yeah, got uh, all the chairs. Obviously, the big, big screens. And if you sit sit in one of the chairs, you'll yeah, notice. Perfect. It's a little bit rigid. Yeah. Nobody can fall asleep. <laughs> you have to stay. <laughs> That's why. Pay attention. Yeah. This so is, it's comfortable, but not too this comfortable. This is awesome. So. Wow. Thank and there's a little sound system and everything. Little uh, little desk in case you know take notes. <laughs> and here's the locker room. Hey, How'd it go? This is crazy. Still, How's it going, we're man? Just, we're doing the doing right tour now. here. Excellent. This. Clover, this is incredible. All I know. Is that a barber? <laughs> Gotta have the barber chair, man. <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> this is amazing. I see, I see the right, pools there. Yeah, I see the we got all the uh, jacuzzis. Hot, wow. hot tub, cold tub. TV screens and all that. You gotta have TV screens everywhere. Here, this Look at one's, the logo. This one's hot, this one's cold, and then this one has uh, different hmm. heights, so you can do things up to here, up to here, you know, different depths. And then oh. it also has a current, so you can swim against it. So when guys get injured, you know, they can do okay. all the exercises. Yeah. And they have screens all over the place. Too. Yeah, TV one screens. Two is a big one. Check this out, this is one you'll be jealous of. Okay. Got the, got the massage, the quiet oh, massage man. room. You know, get your look at get that. your massage in after practice. Not bad, huh? Check this. You'll also like this, Junior. Well, if it's a big dude doing the massage, I don't, <laughs> I don't know if I'm. This <laughs> is called a sensory deprivation float tank. You ever heard of it? Wow. No. So in here. This closes, right? And you open it up, and it's you know it's about this much of water. Okay. And it has a thousand gallons of salt in there. Are you kidding me? And so you lay in there, lights off, and you float. And you and it's like meditation. No sound, no light, and you float, and you, it feels like you're on a cloud. And and I'm you go stunned. in there for thirty minutes, and you just meditate. Did you get that? <laughs> Imagine a guy who's uh, seven feet tall. Yeah, doing they this fit in there and they up. float. You know, this is just your standard yes. showers. Right. And then, right. of course, the steam room. Yes. Beautiful. So. Beautiful, beautiful. Around the corner is, uh, is also a nap room, so guys can take naps. <laughs> take naps. Yep. Uh, I'm not good at getting naps. <laughs> I wake up sick after nap. So. Oh, that that little thing that you show me, is, it, this is crazy. Oh my God. Who had this idea, by the way? And why is it, why do they have that? Like, this yeah. is. It, it's like a. It's like a like meditation a, thing? Yeah, it's like meditation, like de stress, unplug. Okay. Right? You can't be bothered by your phone. You can't, you know. I got you. Then obviously courts. you can yeah. see the courts and, and the banners. Amazing, the banners. All the amazing. history. Uh, we also have one banner up there with all the uh, retired numbers. Okay, that um, one I was here. 2008. Yeah, and then we have the blank one next oh, to it. Oh yeah, that's, no, this is 2018, uh, 18, yeah. 19, yeah. Oh, that's, 19, yeah, yeah 19. That's the, that's yeah. the motivating yeah, one. Yeah, 19. That's the one we're trying I to get. I forget we're in November. Banner 18 in 2019. Boston.
And as you see, we have like exercise bikes up there All so right. players can look and see what's going on the court if they're working Man, out. And this right here. Obviously, you have the view of Boston from the weight room. So from here, you can see, you can see Boston. Uh huh. And then you across the river, you can see Cambridge where Harvard and MIT. You got the tree colors just for you guys, right? Very <laughs> nice. Look at that. 86, the greatest team ever. <laughs> Don't you agree? I, they're, or, they're up there, absolutely. They're up there. Your father. This is our player's favorite area, ah, kitchen. Really, really? It's, it's, it's less about the area, more about Chef Nick. Chef yeah. Nick is amazing. We hired an really? amazing chef. Okay. And he's got a full staff, and they, make, they come in, the guys get a healthy breakfast. It's a huge kitchen. They work out, okay. right? Then they come out and they get a healthy lunch, uh -huh. and then he'll box up a healthy dinner, take this home, eat it so they don't go to eat pizza, uh, okay. fast food, right? Yeah. Like, so we're trying to get them to eat healthy. That's good. We make it easy for them, right? Every, <laughs> every meal. That's incredible. Here, you know, guys can hang Look out, couches. Yeah. You, got, uh, you got PlayStation, Xbox, the, all of uh, that. Firewall. Um, over here, we got the ping pong table where it, it's, oh, yeah. it's actually. Yeah, yeah, I can see the NBA 2K <laughs> here. Yeah, yeah, guys are playing. That's why they play the video games. This, this ping pong table has been really popular, our guys. All right. <laughs> lots of fights. Lots of fights over well, you have, we have Oh, uh, we have actually a ranking here. Yes. Where you are. I'm no, fourth, but you're number four. But I feel like I, I, I feel like I'm better than Tice. I should be number three. <laughs> Many of Tice. I feel like it's Gordon know, Hayward number one. Gordon, Look at that. Gordon is the best. I have to admit that. Come on, Coach. Brad. Brad's got some work to do. Yeah. You know? you gotta, I, we should teach him how to play. <laughs> get get the ball a little bit. Let's all just. Right, all right. It's been a couple of years since I haven't I have played, but let's do that. <laughs> ah. Try it again. Uh, thank you. <laughs> Good enough. <laughs> I would be probably around top 10 there, you know? <laughs> Look at Bill Russell. I got it. Yeah. Does this guy has ring, have rings or not? Look at that. This is actually a cool thing over here. Obviously, you know, it's named for Red Auerbach, yeah. you know, one of the greatest coaches in Mark. any sport yep. history and the we legend. thought it was cool how they did the smoke across the glass the it smoke a, continues to the glass look at this and that's that uh that's amazing. coach steven's office that's brad's office oh really yeah <laughs> that yeah. brings luck to him that's right look at that's the parquet right. gotta have a parquet floor oh, of and of course obviously the ball opposite and that's the uh you know reception desk here beautiful That's just, that's just beautiful Celtics, Celtics facility, man. Beautiful. Right at our back center. Thank you so much, my friend. Man, it was incredible, incredible. This Glad we were able to make it work. This is beautiful.